In this video, I am going to show you how to connect PHP with SQL Server 2019. Let's look at the final result first. This part of code is to establish connection to SQL Server. And this part inserts a row in student's table. Before executing the code, we can see that we have only two rows. Let's execute the code now. Great! Success message was printed. Let's see if the data was really inserted. The data was inserted successfully in SQL Server. We can see that there are three rows now with data provided in the code. Let's open up the SQL Server Management Studio. Let's copy the server name. Here, I have a simple code for connecting PHP with SQL Server. Let's paste the server name here. I have specified the database name as DemoDB here. If you have a username and password you can put it in the connection options. Let's connect and see the DemoDB database. Here, we have the demo DB with a student's table. Let's view the student's table data. We have a single student data here. Let's try connecting to the database with our PHP script. Here, I have the server running on port 80. Let's run the script now. The script gives us error which means the connection was unsuccessful. Let's configure the drivers and settings for a successful connection next. The first step is to download the required PHP drivers. Go to this website to download the PHP drivers. Link is in the description. Open the downloaded file. Agree to the terms by clicking yes. Select the folder where you want the drivers to be downloaded. I will select empty drivers folder in my desktop. The drivers were downloaded successfully. Let's see what files were downloaded. Here, we have drivers for several PHP versions. Check your PHP version to select correct drivers. I have PHP version 8 installed. So I will select driver for PHP 8. I will select these two files and delete the rest. Now, let me explain how to select drivers. I selected the file with 80 in it because my PHP version is 8. Select the file with 74 if your PHP version is 7.4. TS stands for thread safe. So if you want thread safe version, select file with TS and not NTS. Select file with x64 if your computer is 64-bit. Select x86 for 32-bit computer. After noting these three things, select two files with those three things, one with PDO and one without. If you are unsure about your PHP version, execute a PHP script with PHP info function, it will show you your PHP version. It shows the same information that I viewed from command prompt earlier. The second step is to move the appropriate drivers to the ext folder inside the PHP folder. The third step is to modify the php.ini file. 
Open up the php.ini file in the PHP folder. Find the part where the extensions are listed. There, we need to add a couple of extensions. Add two extensions here. The value of these extensions will be the name of the DLL driver files that we moved to the EXT folder earlier. Save the file and the setup part is complete. Let's restart our server and try running the script for connecting PHP and SQL Server again. Great! Connection was established. Our setup was correct. If you are facing problems here, please make sure that you have selected correct files, moved the file to the correct folder and changed the php.ini file as I had showed you. Let's insert a row of data in the students table to check if we can perform operations after making connection. Let's run the script and check if data was inserted. Great, it shows that data was inserted. Let's make sure of it in the SQL Server Management Studio. Great, the data was inserted successfully. Thank you very much for watching this video. Comment queries and suggestions and please consider subscribing. See you in the next one.